Well, it's finally here, Sony's next generation of PlayStation VR, PSVR 2. We've got the headset right here. We've also got the VR 2 Sense Controller Charging Station. We'll do a brief unboxing on both of these, but more importantly, we'll also walk you through the setup process, get a close look at the headset, knobs, switches, things you need to know, and also do a general FAQ on this headset, especially if you are coming from PSVR 1. The unboxing process is fairly straightforward. There's not really a whole lot to see here considering Sony has been uh, pretty diligent on keeping their carbon footprint pretty low lately. So if you've noticed with PS5 itself or, or DualSense or all the uh, related PlayStation 5 accessories, there's not really a whole lot to see. Gotta be really careful with this box if you wanna keep the outer portion in good shape. And inside, we are going to see <coughs> our charging cable, USB-C for the sense controllers. This is going to uh, attach to the headset. This is uh, basically your, your earbuds manual. Move this little outer box. There's our long cable tethered to the actual headset, but here's our two sense controllers. Uh, big thing right now, Sony is not selling these separately, so be very careful with these. Uh, they, you know, appear to be quite fragile considering it's uh, just basic plastic. I'm sure they can take a good beating, but don't, uh, don't get too bold with those. And there's our PSVR 2 headset. Fairly lightweight. Sense controller number one with the little strap already put on. Make sure you're being nice and safe. And our second sense controller right there. There you go. We'll set that aside for now. We'll already take a look at the charging station. This is the only official accessory Sony is selling next to PSVR 2 for now, which makes sense. These are always kind of a luxury item. You certainly don't need this, but if you know we were going to be setting this up, then obviously it's worth uh, grabbing just for convenience. These do require little USB-C receivers, so you can play with these on. Obviously you want to make sure you don't lo lose these. You might want to just put them in right away. And there's documentation in there. AC, power cable. This is actually a bit heavier than I thought it would be, which is good. So it likely won't <clears throat> move around a bit when it's on a table. Now to dock, just for reference on how you're gonna be doing this, the receivers are right here. So let's say you just got done playing, you're holding the controllers. That's simple, not too bad. As for the head mounted display itself, let's do a quick tour of everything on here so you're quite familiar and up to speed if you've not gotten your headset just yet or if you're just curious. So looking at the bottom of the headset, you'll see what appears to be three buttons. On the far left is the function button. You'll primarily use this to activate PSVR 2 see-through mode. The middle is the power button and the far right isn't actually a button, it's PSVR 2's microphone. On the top of the visor, you have a dial on the left and the scope adjustment button on the right. The scope adjustment you would use to set the distance of how far away the lenses are from your face. For the dial, this is what you would use to adjust the lens distance between your eyes. You'll be better acquainted with all these during PSVR 2's initial setup process where the setup wizard will help you fine tune all of these. Much like the first PSVR, you can pull the headband back to put the headset on and you can use the dial on the back to securely fasten it to your head. You would press the button in the middle of the dial to release the grip and take the headset off. For the included stereo headphones, they give you a few extra plugs for later use, but these headphones are specifically designed to connect and sit comfortably around the band of PSVR 2. When the earbuds are not in use, you can push them into this impression on each side of the headset for storage so they're not dangling loose, but it is worth pointing out PSVR 2 does use a standard 3.5mm jack, so you can use any headphones you like. 
As for larger wireless headphones, like Sony's own Pulse 3D wireless headset, there's just enough room for it to fit snugly around PSVR 2's band, giving a nice uniform look. Other headsets may vary on overall fit, but most should be able to work without issue. The gasket light shield can also be taken off for general cleaning. You'll find it hooks into these protrusions around the headset, and it's fairly simple to take off. You would clean this down with water, give it enough time to dry, and then reattach. The easiest way to start reattachment, I find, is starting with the nose area and working from the left to right and meeting around to the other side. Now, the beauty to PSVR 2 compared to the first PSVR's mess of HDMI cables, USB connection, camera connection, and breakout box is that PSVR 2 uses a single USB-C cable that is 4.5 meters long, or about 14.7 feet, making setup the most painless experience ever and providing plenty of slack to play in a standing, open environment. However, it should be worth noting, the USB-C cable does feed directly into the headband, and while we do know the other end of it is USB-C, it's a bit more proprietary in that it's an L-shape with an attached motor wire, making this something that is not user-replaceable, or rather it's not a user-friendly repair if you had to address a broken cable down the road. Looking at the VR2 Sense controllers, this is more in line with other VR headsets. Shying away from PlayStation Move, it's now a split design. L1 and R1 on each side, L2 and R2 in the standard trigger position, again on each side, square, triangle, and the create button are on the left, X, circle, and options are on the right. Both controllers have PlayStation buttons that serve the same purpose. With the included strap, you would just rotate and tug slightly to tighten. And if you do want to remove the straps, simply hold the plastic end and rotate to release it. Like all other PS5 hardware, thousands of tiny PlayStation buttons are used in various places to create a textured grip. Once you connect your PSVR 2 to your PS5 and power it on, Sony has a setup wizard that will get you started, taking you through various important adjustments you'll need to make, like your room's brightness and lens adjustment. From there, you'll activate the see-through mode, which allows you to safely monitor your surroundings in a grayscale view. Your connected sense controllers will always have a HUD indicator that follows your view, so that you always know where you last placed them. Next is the eye tracking setup, where you follow the on-screen reticle to adjust this properly. After this, PSVR 2 will scan your play area. You can play in a seated, standing, or room scale setting. And this process lets you know what you can comfortably play up to. You'll want to move and clear things out of the way if you want to really maximize your play area. After the scanning process, PSVR 2 will give you an initial layout of your floor boundary, which you can edit from there. You can remove or expand your boundary manually with this pointer. And if your floor height isn't correct, you can reach down to the floor with these sense controllers to confirm where your floor is. When using PSVR 2 normally, the control center will always have a quick settings card available. At the top you can access the see-through mode, which can also be activated from the function button, and then below that is adjustments for brightness and screen size when using cinematic mode. That's when you're using PSVR 2 for 2D content, which simulates a giant screen in front of you, so you can make that screen bigger or smaller. There's a quick toggle for the headset vibration, and shortcuts for setting your play area, visibility, or eye tracking. There's an additional shortcut which takes you directly to all PSVR 2 settings. From there, you'll see much of the same options, including some new ones, like boundary display sensitivity. This is for how soon you'll be alerted if you step near your boundaries. You also have the option to turn off eye tracking, which might be useful depending on what you're playing and if you want the feature working. One setting to note is the function button assignment. If you want, you can change this so that it becomes a mute microphone button toggle instead, which if you did this, you'll still be able to access the see-through mode from the quick settings card. Lock audio position is useful if you're playing through cinematic mode. This will make it so that if you turn your head or look away from the virtual screen, that would normally simulate positional audio, but now it would just lock the sound so that it ignores tracking. 
under video output, this is for using a 120 hertz refresh rate during cinematic mode. So let's say you don't have an HDMI 2.1 display with a 120 output, you could actually play high refresh rate games on PSVR 2 through cinematic mode instead, so you would toggle that here alongside the HDR output. Tracking support is for more reliable tracking if you're running into issues with the VR screen moving on its own. A frame will be added around your TV screen to make it easier for the VR headset to recognize it. Finally, you can see the open source software PSVR 2 is utilizing, and then there's also a power save setting for PSVR 2. Holy shit. So with the launch lineup being absolutely packed, it's going to take a bit to work through a lot of those games and come to more firm conclusions, but we can at least have a cursory talk about the experience of playing PSVR 2, in particular if you've tried Sony's first headset. There is no beating around the bush. The benefits and quality of life improvements are immediate. PSVR 2 is on a level playing field now with the inside out tracking, a pass through mode, and updated controller. It feels like a proper modern virtual reality experience. I'm not doing nearly as bad as other racing games in VR, but the motion sickness is hitting me. Having said that, Gran Turismo 7 looks amazing. Oh, oh, it looks so good. It's definitely very cool that this feels just like driving a car. I, I, I really got to get a good racing wheel. I think I would really dig this if I had a, a proper racing wheel, and that's what I'm hearing is that having the racing wheel really completes the, <laughs> completes the setup for this. Things are still familiar in how Sony handles it on PS5 though. You've got the 2D cinematic mode running at all times as needed, the options button is your friend for resetting the screen position, you've got the bespoke PS5 UI elements that function similarly to the first PSVR, you can pretty much hit the ground running with this headset, and that's what I was looking forward to the most. Remove as many barriers as possible, and make it less of a chore to play VR. That's what PSVR 2 does well, right off the jump. We can even take that a step further. There's no longer this commitment needed for setting it up and keeping it in a good place when not in use. Some may find the tethered connection to be a nuisance, but a single cable is more than easy enough to manage. It's essentially on the same playing field now as any other electronic in your life. Just unplug it and whenever you want to jump back in, it's a single USB connection away. You could even use the retail box that it came in, Sony made this so it's a bit more conducive to store it away when you're not using it, which is pretty neat. but. That's besides the point. There's a lot more to discuss when it comes to the eye tracking, foveated rendering, increased resolution, and how all those are applied to the rather familiar software lineup. Most of these aren't new games, so there's still an argument to be made in justifying PSVR 2. We won't be doing that here, but rest assured we'll be doing a deeper dive on these topics later. Uh-oh. Oh, they're huge in real life. That's how big they are? I'm not dying for a shadow Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you found something in here that was useful. And if you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.